Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged. Here we talk about lasers of all kinds and how to start your business, etc. But today, I'm doing a full review of the longer Ray 5 20 watt laser. First of all, I'm going to give it kudos for not having some strange name that I can't pronounce. Now, yes, this machine was sent to me. I have put it through a rigorous test. I mean, I have been using this laser exclusively for the past month. Like, just putting it... I have made so much stuff using this laser that I feel like I really, really know it and can really give it a thorough review. So I'm going to tell you all the things that, you know, I like about it. I'm going to tell you some things, some challenges this uh, laser has, which I got to say are not many. I can wholeheartedly say this is the best laser, diode laser that I have worked with yet. And I haven't worked with all of them, but uh, I, what the first thing that catches me is just, I took it out of the box. I put it together. It came together exactly right the first time. This rarely happens for me because I just like to put things together and it just worked and everything was smooth and it was nice. And I put a piece of wood in there and just started engraving. I started cutting and it just did it. And that's pretty much how it's worked since day one. Uh, I'll show you some pictures here, just the vast amount of things that I've created this month. I am, I am preparing to do a show. And I cannot be messing around with a laser that's not going to work. You know, and I have had some problems in the past with several machines, and you've watched this channel, you know. That's the one thing that will drive me crazy. You don't have to be the fanciest with all the bells and whistles. In fact, that a lot of those bells and whistles drive me crazy. What I want you to do is be consistent. And then when I put a piece of wood down and I'm going to make something that I, you know, that I, when it's done, it's done. And I don't have to recut it. I don't have to wonder whether it's going to happen. And maybe all you out there are wondering the same thing or you've worked with lasers. And, uh, you know, the consistency, it all comes down to that. So I set it up easy. Uh, about 40 minutes, I was working. Now, a lot of channels out there, they'll show you how thick something can cut. And I think this is one of the most ridiculous things. And I don't blame the channels because I, I guess a lot of people like to see that. But if you're buying a laser, a diode laser, uh, you know, 20 watts to cut through three quarter inch plywood, um, I got to say, you're just up barking up the wrong tree, like pun intended. Um you should be looking for things that you are actually going to do with it and make sure it can do those things consistently. Because if you are cutting quarter inch uh, hardwood, say I'm cutting quarter inch walnut, right? And it does it about 80% of the time. So somebody on YouTube can show you, oh, it does it. But then you go to do it yourself. It works sometimes. It doesn't sometimes. Just a little bit of fluctuation in the wood, the way it's made. Uh, or hitting a knot or something, it doesn't cut out and you waste a whole piece of walnut. That is not the laser you want to have. So this is what I would say. If you're going to do quarter inch, eighth inch, plywood, hardwood, etc., this laser will do it. It will do it consistently in one pass every time. That's been my experience. And that is why I enjoy working with it. That's why I haven't been using my other lasers. Because I, th I throw the piece of wood in there. I know it's going to come out. The hardest part for me is finishing my projects now because I'm cutting and making so many things. And so it's really not about making the, the you know, cutting it out. It's about doing the finish work. So I will say for $800, this is top of the, this is, it, as far as I'm concerned, I, there's no reason to get anything else. Uh, it shows eight fifty nine dollars uh, on the website. I've got a discount code they gave me. You get, I don't know, it makes it $800, including the air assist. I say it's a no-brainer because I already know that for this size laser, it works. And so I could give my recommendation for anybody who knows what they want, right? 
You're not somebody who's going to buy an extension. You're not going to go do, you know, you're not going to need a lot of accessories and things like that. I mean, it has, of course, it comes with the air assist. You can get a honeycomb bed anywhere. It has a laser rotary, but, and uh, an enclosure, right? But it doesn't have an extension kit. It doesn't have a Z axis or none of those things. So if you know what you want and you're like, I want to save a little money. I know what I want. I'm not going to cut any bigger than 400 by 400, or you could put it on top. So a little bit ago, I mentioned the fact that, you know, we don't need to see it cut through three quarter inch plywood or anything like that. Well, here's half inch plywood, and I'll tell you why I'm showing you. Um, this is this is the half inch, and uh, I'll put it up on the screen. I needed to make a hole. Uh, you know, I need. I have a screen door. So I had to make a pass through for my six inch uh, venting, right? So this is a practical thing. I needed to do it. So I needed a laser made the most sense. I didn't want to try and cut it out with some router or something like that or try and use, you know, there's, there's several ways that you can do this with uh, power tools. But to me, it made the most sense to be able to use a laser because I'm going to get a perfect one. I can put it right where I want it. So yeah, it cut it out. Did I, I had to use like four passes because this is the absolute crappiest Home Depot plywood you can get full of garbage and knots and everything. And uh, yeah, it cut it out. Um, so I was happy it could do that. But will I, would I spend an extra $200 or $400 or $1,000 so that I would be able to do that? No, because... It, it's better to save the money and just cut it out with using some other tool. So yeah, it was nice that it could do it, but that is in no way a reason why I'm buying this machine. Uh, it is very light. It's easy. You can put it on top of a piece of board and cut things out if you need to. Extremely portable. Uh, everything on it came working buttery smooth. I had no issues. Doesn't mean that's going to be your issue. You know, it the way it works for you, I've only got one machine and this is how it worked for me. I didn't have to adjust anything. And like I mentioned before about the safety, you know, like my Laser Master 3 and a lot of these machines, they'll come with uh, a hard stop thing and and um, keys or, you know, all this stuff that absolutely drives me crazy because I have to do some work. I need to put a cover on it or something. I come back and it's hit the hard stop and I didn't notice it. And I'm like, hey, why isn't it working? Uh, the keys, all they're going to do is get in the way for me. I don't need that. Now, if you do need that, get a machine that has that. But for me, it's really nice this doesn't have that. And the, the one thing that it has that I wish it didn't have is the fire control mechanism. And uh, I, I read this on Louis. Actually, I started having this problem. I saw a video on it. I can't even remember what it was. And I also read about it in the Louisiana Hobby Guys um, forum that the way this fire suppression thing works, if sunlight hits it, it will literally make the thing go off. So this is the one time that I have been super pissed off at this machine. Um, I was halfway through a cut and all of a sudden it said, oh, you know, stop because of fire. And you can't like just reset it at that point. So yeah, that drove me a little crazy. I personally, I'm not saying I did, but I might have covered the fire suppression thing that's behind the the, um, the display there. It's on the backside of that little computer. Um, and it may or may not have fixed the problem. And I've never had to deal with that again. Now, I'm not somebody who leaves my laser running when I'm not around and uh, I don't think I would trust any of those types of things anyway as being something that's going to uh, keep my, you know, keep my house safe. Maybe covering it up might work. You know, I don't think I'm officially allowed to say that. But, uh, you know, I think that is like the only negative that I would say that really pissed me off. And like I said, it doesn't have a lot of accessories. Um it does have the shield, and I think you probably notice it right away. When you look at the machine, you're like, hey, you know, a lot of these, like the Aetzer and other things, have that shield that 
drive me crazy, drives a lot of people crazy because it's really hard to see where the beam is to line things up. Now, I have fixed that on mine, and I also wanted to mention, you know, you are looking at a $200 difference. Now, what are you going to get for that 200 bucks? Well, the ability to upgrade things, and that's really it. It may look fancier or whatever, but they're all working pretty much the same as far as the 20-watt modules. I'm a big fan of Acer as far as I can tell. I haven't used one yet, but from what everybody is telling me, it's a, it's a good machine. So this is really the competition. I mean, is it worth it for you to spend the 200 bucks to get up to the Acer? Or do you want to save the $200? You know what you're doing. I only need this machine. It's light. It does everything I need. There's no reason for me to spend more. That's the person I think should go for this machine. Because I, I think we're looking at two quality machines here. But what, what I did is I removed the cover of this. You're going to need to do that to clean the lens anyway. So I just removed it and left it off. And you can see where the air nozzle comes down. And the air works fantastic on this. I can't even... I mean, I am so impressed with how the air is working and um, keeping the lens clean. So you do need to run a little bit of air no matter what. Uh, at least that's what I would recommend. Uh, you don't have to run it full blast, but it does keep the smoke off of the lens. When I didn't use air just to test it, uh, I had to clean the lens. And a lot of people probably aren't going to notice that, you know, with whatever one you have, the Acer or the X-Tool or, or this longer, people aren't going to notice if their lens is dirty because it's, you know, underneath all of this stuff. So... Removing this just has made things so much easier for me. You know, it's behind an enclosure. It's behind, you know, laser resistant glass already. So I'm okay with that. You may not be okay with that. I generally wear my fancy dancy glasses. Um, you know, when I'm, I generally wear my fancy glasses all the time anyways. Uh, these are the ones I got from the Laser Master 3 and I absolutely love them. Uh, the one thing about that that I'll probably never get rid of. It's been a pretty long-winded video already, but uh, there was a few other things I wanted to mention. Uh, the twisty knobs, the thing that, that you do do the focus, it has two knobs you have to loosen to be able to get focus. Instead of one, like the, you know, Laser Master 3 only has one knob and it's fairly easy. And then I've got a Z control that I could just twist on the top. That's really nice. Now, has that caused me any issues? No, it's still been just fine. It works way better than I thought it would. But taking off the module here is a little more difficult. I mean, in fact, it's a lot more difficult than taking it off, say, from the Laser Master 3. But at the same time, this module weighs about, what, eight, ten times more than that one. So it definitely needs something to hold it in. This is a no joke module here, but I got to say it cuts really well. That's kind of really all I got to say about it. I'm I, again, I think for just your basic 20 watt laser engraver, it, it really does everything that I've asked it to do. I have no trouble saying for the next couple of months, this is the machine that I'm going to be using the most uh, just because of ease and bed size and everything that I need it to do uh, to get ready for this show. And that I know consistently it will do what I'm asking it to do. Now, I'm happy to like answer questions. Uh, this may not be right for you. 20 watts may not be right for you. You may want a 10 watt or a 5 watt or 35 watt as far as the diode lasers go. And they may be coming out with new things on the horizon. Uh, I'm talking about right now and what my uses are. Uh, you've really got to think about what your uses are. But uh, I am literally running a small business on this right now, um, but it's part-time small business. So again, I'm sure I'm missing some things, but you know, it's been a lot of fun using this machine and uh, we'll see what comes up next. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Love y'all.